Now let's look at some guidelines for curve sketching. This is basically a summary of everything we've done so far. We found x-intercepts, we found y-intercepts, these, these are pre-calculus skills. Um, we have done symmetry. This is again pre-calculus. Plug in negative x and see if um, the curve is symmetrical about the x-axis, the y-axis, etc. The domain and range. You always need to determine what your domain is and that gears you, uh, gives you an idea of where you need to go with the rest of the problem. Clearly there's no reason to look at functions of, say, x being greater than 1 if you have a circle centered at 1. Then you need to look at continuity. Where is this function continuous? Where, are, where is it discontinuous? Look for vertical asymptotes. Remember this is where, um, and this is more of a, a calculus than a lot of these. Um, of course, continuity, you're going to look for piecewise functions and what happens um, at the junction between the, the two functions. For vertical asymptotes, if you have a function in the numerator and a function in the denominator, the vertical asymptotes are where q is zero. You're going to look at differentiability. Are you capable of taking the derivative? So like the absolute value function is not differentiable at x equals zero. You're going to look for relative extrema. Okay, this is where the first derivative is zero. And you're also going to look to where the first derivative does not exist. You're going to look at concavity. Remember, this is where the second derivative is positive, or the second derivative is negative. So this is concave up, this is concave down. You're going to look for points of inflection. Points for inflection are where the second derivative is zero, and the concavity goes from positive from concave up to concave down, or where the first second derivative goes from positive to negative, or negative to positive. You're going to look for horizontal asymptotes. You're going to look at what happens. Uh, here you're going to look at the limit as x goes to plus and minus infinity of your function to see if it approaches a number that shoots off to infinity. And then you're going to look at all infinite behavior. This is the summary from your book, but I liked the one I gave you before. Make sure you determine the domain and range of the function. Find intercepts, asymptotes, and symmetry. And then locate the x values for which f prime and f double prime are zero or don't exist. And this will help you find the extrema for points of inflection. Now, remember, identify the domain, look for symmetry, uh, look for your x-intercepts, your y-intercepts, your VAs, your vertical asymptotes, your horizontal asymptotes, we call these HAs, they're funny. Critical numbers, where is f prime increasing? Where is f prime decreasing? Remember, this is where f prime is greater than zero for increasing, and f prime is less than zero when it's decreasing. Possible inflections is when the second derivative doesn't is zero or doesn't exist. Concavity, and then make a chart of f, f prime, and f double prime over your entire interval and test everything. Now I want you to be careful when you're using technology because a lot of times on these problems you'll put them into your calculator and your calculator may show you glitches or it may show you a bizarre window. For example, let's look at this graph right here. You've typed f of x is x cubed minus 25x squared plus 74x minus 20 in your calculator and it gives you this. All right, You're going to think it has one maximum and two zeros and you will lose most of your points because your window is too small. So make sure you check your window Okay, to make sure it's including enough of your function. And not so much of your function that you can't see detail. And the second thing you need to do is check for glitches. Because depending upon what kind of calculator you have, it'll handle glitches in a different way. It may give you a squiggly line, it may give you a vertical line, it may block out.